did and everything we've done has led us up to this particular point. I'm not getting off on a different subject at all, am I? You know, God told the Israelites, Isaiah 43, 19, said, put me in remembrance. He said, put me in remembrance. So it, it doesn't come as a strange thing for Jesus to tell disciples that night, as often as you do this, do in remembrance of me. You see, uh, Jesus said this. So at this table, if we come today, there's only one thing on the menu, brethren. Just, just one item. You can think about anything you want to when you come to this table, as long as it's about Jesus Christ. Now, what a wonderful provision this is, and what a nice ar arrangement is because you can think anything you want about Jesus, and it's going to be a good, a good thing for you. It's going to be, it's going to bring you a blessing. Think anything about Jesus, and it's going to be profitable. There's nothing like you got to skip over and overlook and, and, and think about something. Of every, anything that you think about Jesus is going to profit you and bless you. Because, yes. you know, he's absolutely lovely. He's absolutely uh, profitable. And uh, he, Jesus is, I'm telling you, Jesus is 100% pure blessing in and, uh, and every aspect of the way. Uh, I want to bring before you, though, two things to consider this morning. At this table, you see, that, that Jesus set before us, we have two things to look at. We have his mercy and we have his might. God has put before us at this table Christ Jesus, who is both merciful and mighty. Amen. And it reminds us when we come here, he's both merciful, he's full of mercy, and he's also almighty God right here on display. And you know what a wonderful combination this is. We have a God who's all-powerful, all-powerful, and is at the same time full of mercy, abundant in mercy. I mean, it, it would seem like a contradiction in this world to have two of these things mixed together like this, but this is the way it is. You can, you can have God who is so powerful and that he is absolutely as equal in mercy. In chapter 33, Moses, he, he pleaded with God. He began to plead with God to show himself. Yeah. I beseech thee, show uh, me thy glory. And God said, Thou canst not see my face. There shall no man see me and live. But I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and show mercy on whom I will show mercy. So in the 34th chapter we read, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and yet will by no means clear the guilty, visiting iniquity on the fathers, upon the children, and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Now, among all the other attributes listed there, God's long suffering and, 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 and the other things, he, his graciousness and his goodness and truth. Mercy is, is listed twice, just, for, just to see that. He mentions mercy twice. Mercy and gracious, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sins, and yet by no means will clear the guilty. Now, this is a tall order. <laughs> Since we all find out mankind is guilty, you see, we're all guilty. And so, uh, and we all fall in this area of uh, iniquity and transgressions and sins. But God is going to be merciful. You see, he's going to forgive them. So, so how's, it, how's this going to take place? We go over to a, a scripture like Psalms 85, 10, and we read something like this. We love it. This scripture here, mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The things that has kept us from God was not his mercy, but it was his truth that we were transgressors from God. That's what kept us from God, you see. The truth is that we're rightly judged as guilty, guilty of death, matter of fact. And that's the truth of the matter. God can't ignore the truth, you see. He is full of mercy, but that's not all he's full of. He's, full, he's equally full of righteousness and truth. So his righteousness, you see, demanded that he be by no means cleared the guilty. I can't do this. It, it really doesn't make any sense even to us to overlook a, a, a guilty party, overlook something that's right. Uh, uh, we can't make allowance for things that's not right. It's got to be fixed. You see, we understand that. And every reasonable person can see this, a problem's got to be fixed before we can move on from here. And so this is why our particular problem, you see, yeah. our particular problem is one that we couldn't fix. That's right. 
Wherefore, as one by one man centered and into the world, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for all that have sinned. We couldn't fix that problem, brethren. Only God could do it. And God was willing to do this, you Amen. see, because he's merciful. That's right. Keep a mercy for thousands, forgiven iniquity, transgressions, and sin, you see. So as it regards man, there was a time when mercy and truth was far apart, distant opposite ends. Righteousness and peace was just as distant on opposite ends. The disobedience of man caused this, this large gap between the two. But now they've come together, okay? And they've kissed each other in the name of Jesus Christ under beautiful language. If you, if you have an overwhelming desire for mercy and truth, righteousness and peace with God, it's because of Jesus. Yeah. Now, the law came by Moses, good enough. But see, grace and truth yeah. came by Christ Jesus, even better. And mercy. Now we've, made, we've obtained mercy through Christ Jesus. And God brings us mercy in his most powerful way. Now, I want, to see, I want you to see the mighty hand of God. Yeah. My, 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 my right arm is going to bring salvation. What a strong arm this is going to come out to be. Who is this that cometh from Eden? with dyed garments from Boraz, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. Yeah. Yes. I that speak in righteousness mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that had treaded in the wine fat, I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger, and I will trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will and I will slain, stain all my raiment. Yes. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Amen. And I looked, and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold me. Therefore my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. This is what Jesus was doing, brethren. This is, the, this is all, this is the mighty Savior, see. From the day one, this is what he was doing. He was bringing salvation on the earth. Yeah. Isaiah tells us right here, a glimpse behind the scene. What was really going on, I wanted you to see, is this battle that Jesus was fighting to bring salvation. Jesus alluded to this in Mark 3.27. No man... Enter into a strong man's, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. In this account, Jesus says, I don't cast out demons by the power of Satan. It doesn't make any sense for Satan to cast out his own demons. What I do, I do by the power of God, Jesus said. A house divided cannot stand. I cast out demons by the power of God. So in Luke 11, he says, But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man armeth, keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divided his spoil. So Jesus, I'm telling you, he's the stronger than he in that yeah. verse. Amen. We know that Jesus had, what well, Jesus had absolute authority was on the earth. He did. He, had, he cast out demons. He had command over the earth, when the seas obeyed, the animal kingdom listened right. to God. And, and all of these things. But when Jesus went into the strong man's house, you see, he completely devastates and brings a, uh, Satan out. Jesus goes in into the actual domain of Satan, and he conquers him and defeats him and takes away his power. Now, this domain of the house of Satan or this domain is actually the place of death where Jesus enters in. He goes into a place where no man has ever been able to leave from. Jesus goes in there, and he leaves again. He goes in, and he comes out. So he takes captivity captive, you see. He just utterly destroys Satan. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. The saints, we reply, he's our Lord, the king of glory. So this, this morning, I, I bring before you a, a table that's full of mercy. And a table that's full of might and power. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, 
we thank you for Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for the things he's done for us. He's redeemed us, saved us, he keeps us. Father, we pray that you would enable us to focus on him more clearly at this time. Help us to consider him and honor him in our hearts. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen.